Well, so I'm sitting here in my house working on my computer and I'm tired of working on my computer. So let's go do our first rod build. Never actually built one of these rods. Uh, my little logo stickers finally came in the mail. <clears throat> uh, so I think I actually am ready. I have everything I need. I have the, uh, I have one of uh, the Scroggins starter kits, a couple of blanks uh, that I came back from Mudhole with. Um, so thanks again to the guys at Mudhole and to Mr. Scroggins for putting this together. Um, yeah, let's go see if we can build our first rod. We're gonna head out to the fish cave. Uh, the table's gonna look a little different. No plastisol, so that's definitely a first, and uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Okay, everybody, welcome back to the world's worst fishing. Uh, looks a little different on the shop table today. You guessed it, this is my first ever rod build. I've never actually made one of these things myself. Uh, I trained with Terry Scroggins uh, in about mid-December, and uh, <clears throat> Mudhole sent me home with some goodies here. So this is uh, basically the contents of the all-in-one rod building supply kit from Mudhole. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about, um, about how to get your hands on some of this stuff and what the costs are. Um, probably towards the end of the video, we'll discuss those things. But for now, we're just going to kind of take a closer look. Um, so you can see that this is a motorized rod rotator. What this will do is spin this rod like a rotisserie chicken once the rod is done and the epoxy needs to set. Um, so that's one of the most important things that, that it comes with. It also comes with this crazy looking contraption right here. This is how you wrap your guides. Um, you know, so you have your spools of thread, you have a tension rod, which is very important. Uh, it comes with a little, um, <laughs> with, with a little how-to instruction guide right there, literally right in front of your face as you're doing it. Now there is um, assembly required for this. You have to put this together. Uh, you know, I had to put in these little eyes here and, and put this together, put the uh, uh, thread, thread spools on put this tension rod on, etc. cetera. Um, took, me, took me maybe about 20 minutes. Um, the only thing I'll say is whenever you're mounting this tension rod, there's a spot where it goes in the back there. There's a little hole. Um, let's see if I can get a really good close up in focus. Come on, there we go. I, uh, I tried to force it in, I guess, and instead of pre-drilling it out at first like an idiot and actually Wind, wound up breaking the very end of it uh, so I cut it down so mine's actually not quite as long as it would be um, so just a word of caution if you're a beginner like I am uh, don't make that mistake just get you a little teeny tiny drill bit the hole's already there but you might want to pre-drill it a little bit um, and I didn't do that despite having a drill because I was in a hurry like an idiot speaking of the drill um, you'll see these here in a minute these come with the kit as well these are basically a uh, fiberglass drill bit wrapped with some pretty mean sandpaper. And if you've seen my video with Terry Scroggins, you've seen these in action. That's how you ream out um, some of the handle pieces. So you'll see this handle here, get it in focus, right? I've already kind of messed with it a little bit, but that hole doesn't necessarily fit every single different size rod blank. So you use these bits to basically get these grips on there um, nice nice and snug and so you basically use those bits to ream those out and then of course some epoxy here we have the pro paste um, that's what you actually set these components with once you set the guides you're going to use this epoxy over here um, speaking of guides obviously a set of guides this is one of terry scroggins pro kits so this is a monster rod here this is ah it won't focus. A 936, I believe. Come on, camera. Yeah, there we go. That's what uh, that's what this is right here. This is a seven foot nine, basically flipping stick. It's a monster. Um, I'm gonna use it for big swim baits, Alabama rigs, and of course flipping. So um, that's just a little overview. There are actually a few more components that come with the starter kit that I don't have laid out here, um, but this is just a brief overview, and you'll see those other items in action 
Now the first step is to basically get these, the handle and reel seat portions, onto the blank so that we can then permanently affix them with epoxy. And the way to do that is to take those drill bits and drill these out. Um, the reel seat is sized to fit the blank. Um, at least it is if you buy a rod kit. Now if you buy a bank, if you buy a blank separately, um, there's probably a sizing chart um, in order to buy the reel seat of your choice that will actually fit fit the blank. So if it's the wrong size, it may not fit down the blank far enough and then your reel seat will only slide up to there and you can't really drill that out. Um, so first step is just to kind of get these started, okay? So this is just kind of a medium size uh, reamer here, okay? So I'm gonna do that, do that over a plate. And you'll feel it kind of stop as it goes in there. You're not just going to accidentally punch it right through. You know, it's not a, it's not a real drill bit. Same, same for this piece right here. It needs that first size through it. Okay. All right. This is the only part of rod making that seems to be a, a little bit messy. <clears throat> So as you can tell, that opened it up just a little bit. So now what we're gonna need to do <clears throat> is go up in size. So this is kind of the first size. This one right here is the first size um, that kind of opens these up a little bit. There are some smaller size if you're working on really tiny rods, you know, ultralights, etc. cetera. Um, but for these big flipping sticks, <clears throat> you gotta really keep going up in size till they're, till they're correct, um, till they're the correct diameter on the inside. Okay, there we have it. So after using uh, a few larger size um, bits there, we have everything reamed out to where it slides down far enough to where I can kind of match it up with about where I want it. <clears throat> I might actually make, <clears throat> sorry, this is the beauty of custom rod building. I'm actually gonna make it a little further up. So the distance from the very back of my rod to the trigger, I'm actually, you can see, I have it about an inch above here. So I can, I can just slide that piece up. Um, so because this is gonna be such a heavy rod for heavy applications, I want a lot of, of butt section here to rest up against my body for extra leverage. So anyway, now what we need to do is mix up some epoxy all right, so now we're gonna get our pro paste ready. There is obviously two parts. So um, you don't have to be 100% precise with this. So we're just gonna kind of uh, goop some out here. Well, maybe not either. I guess I need like a popsicle stick or something to really to really get this stuff out with out, outright. Come on now. I don't have any popsicle sticks, which is why I'm using a bamboo skewer. You know, I don't want to mix up, uh, don't want to mix it up with like a real spoon or something like that, because epoxy kind of doesn't come off. So we're going to start with that amount right there of part uh, A, the resin. Okay, and then this right here is the hardener, I believe. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to. Uh, mix some of that out and just try to get it about even at least that's what mr scroggins told me he said you don't have to be 100 percent accurate here so anyway now we're just going to mix this up just like you would i think this is like 20 minute epoxy or something like that so it's not too bad all right so we're going to start with with just the end there and um it's going to be hard to to get all of this exactly on focus um, but anyway we're just going to kind of dab this stuff on okay now this butt cap does fit a little tight um, the uh, the uh, bits really only could could get it so wide you can just for uh, reference there you remember how that hole started it is much larger now 
So what Terry was saying he liked to do is just kind of rotate it on, then, ro then back it back off. That way you're getting a good coat of epoxy inside as well as just on the blank. And then maybe, let's see, you know, there again, my first time. I don't know how much of this stuff to put on there. But I'm just going to add a little bit back down there on that end. And here we go. Okay. I want to try to make sure this bad boy doesn't come off. So, anyway, we're going to go with that. And then, of course, we're going to clean that up with a paper towel. As long as we just kind of get that up now, then we should be good to go. You, I'm sure you can use a uh, also some sort of agent to make sure that you get all this stuff off. Okay, so there we go. As long as you deal with it now and not later. Because <laughs> later it's not coming off. Okay, and now we're ready for this part right here. Okay, this is the part that uh, definitely is important. So I'm going to kind of put this epoxy sort of in line with where that one is right there on the other side. But maybe just slightly forward again, like I said, I'm going to scoot this up a little bit. Okay, it's one of the great things about custom rod building. All right, so now we're just going to kind of see how that does. Okay, All right, so that's kind of where I want it right there. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, and so now we have this piece on there, so I just need to basically cover the area now in front of this one with epoxy. Okay. And we are almost done with what is essentially half of building a rod. It's just getting all of this set. Now in a few minutes we'll find the spine of the rod, which is arguably the most important step if you want your rod to balance correctly and not snap. So let's just kind of see how this does. Oh yeah, beautiful. That's on there good and tight. There's one more little piece. Just this little, uh, this little part right there. Come on. That just kind of dresses up the front there. So we'll go ahead and slide that on down with some epoxy. And, uh, and then we'll find the spine on this bad boy. And one thing I wanted to touch on, there's kind of a slight little gap um, between the blank and, and the front of that real seat. So you want to try to jam a little bit of epoxy in there. That was one thing that, that Terry was showing me. So that's what we're doing. And then this little piece, come on, focus. Sorry, just when you have things in the background and foreground, it tries to choose one to focus on. Then that piece right there will kind of bunch up and seal that on. All right, and we'll wipe that off. Get that epoxy off. Okay. Clean that up just a smidge there. All right, there we go. Now let's find the spine. Okay, so this is about the best angle that I can think of to, with, without having somebody filming me doing this um, to show you the spine. So every rod, even your golf clubs at home, um, have a spine. You know, the way that these blanks are, are kind of circularly, circularly woven, there's, there's a spine to them. And the way to do that is actually you're, you're going to want to take the rod here, push down on it, and bend it up with your other hand. So I'm pushing and bending. You want a lot of bend in the rod. Boom. See, I'm bending it. And then you spin it. Um, and as you spin it, I'm going to do it this way. So I'm going to rotate it. Watch my fingers. I'm rotating. The rod just kind of stops. It, it does that on its own. So I'm going to rotate it again. Boom. That's the spine. Now, there's a strong spine and a weak spine. That's the strong one. So if I rotate it again, it's going to kind of snap into place right there. That's the weak spine. Now, I'm going to rotate it again. Watch my fingers, pushing it forward. Boom. It really snaps into place there. So as of right there, the rod is facing 
um, is facing the spine. I want my trigger up. I want it in line with the spine. Okay, so now let's try it again. Okay, let's put tension in our rod. Got a lot of bow in it, as you can see. Really bowing the rod. Boom. Okay, let's try it again. There's our weak spine. There's our strong spine. Weak spine. Boom. See how it just kind of snaps? And it might actually even need to go this way a smidge. And this is what's good about, about, uh, about the epoxy is that these are already epoxied on, but there's still enough play in it that I can then adjust this. Let's contrast that. This rod right here, this is a great rod. This is a Bass Pro Shops Carbon Light. Let's see if it's on spine. And, and there again, this is a great rod. I have absolutely no complaints, okay? Let's just kind of rotate it. There's the spine. That's the strong spine. You'll see the trigger is pointing way off down to the left, okay? There's our weak spine. There's our strong spine. This rod is not on spine. Most of the rods that you buy are not on spine. Again, there's one of the benefits of custom rod building. You can make a rod that doesn't break. All right, so um, everything is, uh, is set up. The epoxy is probably still drying, but everything's uh, in place and it's not going to move around um, while I continue work. <clears throat> so I have, again, this carbon light set out here. And this is just to assist me with guide spacing, okay? Um, but before we do that, <clears throat> we need to get some of these, these tubes, okay? So what these tubes do, let me see if I can focus. What these do are these act as spacers, like little rubber bands, okay? And essentially what you do is you slide that down the guide, and it becomes a rubber band, so to speak, that is a placeholder for the guides. Okay, so <clears throat> what's neat about this, uh, I don't even know what you call it, rod wrapping machine, is that <clears throat> it, it literally uses the same holders here. So everything is in line. You really can't put your, you, you really can't set it up wrong necessarily. <clears throat> um, so basically, um, like I said earlier, there's some assembly acquired, uh, required here, but the path that the thread takes is it comes off the spool over this way so not under but over goes through this first little eye down here <clears throat> then through the tip of this tension rod then down this eye then through this eye and this right here moves you know that way you can kind of that way i can wrap this side of the guide and that side of the guide you know it literally just free free falls all right so let's wrap a guide <clears throat> so we're going left to right here so you start kind of on the other side or on the outside of the guide and you wrap your way in. So to get it started, literally just gonna wrap it around the rod a few times, okay? All right, and now what I'm gonna do, this tag end, I'm gonna kinda run it back over, okay? And then I'm gonna rotate the rod where it goes over that tag end a few times. Okay. That way, okay, so see how it goes through there like that. That tag end is now wrapped. Now, I can, now what I can do is actually cut that tag end off, okay? So this will help kind of clean up what we're looking at here, okay? Actually, it's better just to hit it with a razor blade right there. All right, so now you can see I'm not even touching it and it's holding pressure. Now we can begin our wrap, or so to speak. So anyway, kind of take your fingernails and kind of bunch some of this up, but now I'm just gonna rotate the rod just with my fingers, just spinning it, okay? Now, being that this is my kind of first time doing this, I'm not going to get a perfect wrap, especially with thread this small. I mean, you just, you would have to just wrap it so well to not have any gaps, you know, if, 
if, if I wanted to just do it with a single layer without gaps and, and really wrap it up neat, I would need a little bit thicker thread. A at least with my level of skill right now, I would need thicker thread. Um, this is tiny thread. So in order to fill in those gaps, I'll probably have to also wrap a layer um, going the opposite direction, which might make some of you uh, experienced rod wrappers cringe. All right, come on now. We need, there we go. Sorry about the focus, guys. I'm trying to watch what I'm doing and look at the camera screen in order to make sure that the footage is good, okay? All right, so now <clears throat> this little rubber band placeholder, I don't really need that there. It's, it's kind of in the way. So I'm just going to hit it with the um, <clears throat> razor blade there, okay? So now we're just going to continue wrapping up that guide there. Okay. Again, to get this perfect, uh, definitely it's going to require require some uh, some practice. Okay. So anyway, like I said, I'm going to start it back in the other direction. Um, for some of you rod wrapping purists, please forgive me. First time here, and again. Um, you know, this particular video is, is literally my first time. You know, the, the point is to show you how approachable this rod building stuff is. You know, this isn't any fancy techniques or any super artful wrapping here. This is just, hey, you can build a rod your first time and do it right and do it functional. Um, especially, I think, with the mud hole platform. Alright, so you see this red thread here. I'm literally just going to make a loop. And I'm going to put that loop, yeah, come on, up under that main line, okay? And I'm just going to continue wrapping. I'm going to wrap over that red loop a few times, okay? This will ensure that whenever I cut, cut this main line off, that the whole thing doesn't unravel, okay? Maybe one more. Okie doke. So, th so there we go. Now, I'm literally going to cut that main line. Okay. And then I'm going to put it through, if you can see, I'm going to put it through that red loop like so. I'm going to pull a little bit of tension on both of them. Okay. Then I'm going to pull the red thread through which pulls that main line through. Okay, and now hit it with the razor blade. Just like that. Okay, again, trying to get this stuff to focus. We're trying to look at an area the size of, of half a penny. So there you go. And you can still move that around a little bit whenever, um, whenever you go to kind of really line up your guides for the last time. So I uh, was playing around here and wanted to test a, a theory. Um, let's say you run out of the little rubber bands or you cut the rubber band off too soon and then you mess up your wrap and you need to do it again. Well, you can't slide the rubber band down um, if all your other guides are already set with their rubber bands. So you can just take some masking tape. I wanted to know that I could do that um, in case I mess a wrap up. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that right there is almost perfect. The entire thing is single wrap. No gaps with this little teeny tiny thread. Um, so here I am half an hour later, and if you just take your time, um, you, you, can, you can wrap these things pretty dang clean. So, um, you know, the, the next step and what I hope to learn as I keep doing this is to be able to add, you know, little accent colors on either side, you know, and then cool patterns within the threads. But for right now, just trying to get a good functional wrap. And so far, that's my cleanest one. Okay, so now we're going to do the tip and it's essentially um, hot glue. So basically, I'm just going to melt this. All right, with a lighter. Just kind of goop that on the tip there. 
All right. Then before it cools, put that tip on. Just like that. Come on. Gotta move that lighter. Then maybe, yeah, then maybe we can get some focus. Okay, so all of my guide wrapping is now done. So now we're gonna customize a little bit. I have these little World's Worst Fishing logo stickers that I had made. With the rod facing completely up where the reel is going to be, we're just gonna put this decal on pretty much right up in front of um, the, the reel seat there. So we're gonna do like a little layer of thread here and then a layer of thread here, which is where we're gonna put our uh, hook keeper on. Okay. Beautiful. Boom. And just like that, you have your own freaking rod. Okay, so now we have the rod. It's completely finished. Everything is wrapped. Tip is on. Uh, decal logos on. Everything is done. So now we put it in the rotator. Okay, so we're just going to switch that on. As you can see, it's just a nice, slow rotate. And here's just the setup. You just set it in that, and then set it on one of those, okay? And it will spin like a rotisserie chicken pretty much all, as long as you want it. Okay, so there we have our uh, red and blue. So you can see it has um, these lines of measurement here. I'm just gonna squirt out to the four, okay, so that'll be two millimeter, milliliters of each. Okay, so here's one part going in. Um, actually, I gotta look at it from there, so 12 to 10, technically, is what I'm gonna be doing. Okay, so 12 to about 10, also 12 to 10. All right, looked about right to me, okay. Uh, sorry about the noise in the background. Uh, I'm gonna stir this up. So, that dead gum laundry. Okay, so here we go. We have our cup of epoxy, and uh, the kit comes with these little brushes. So we're literally just going to get some epoxy on our brush there, and then just hold it. And we're just gonna let the circular motion apply our epoxy. So again, we're just literally just laying the brush on it, letting it apply the epoxy for us, essentially. Okay, and there's one final look. The epoxy is on. We need to let that sit. I'm going to let it sit pretty much the rest of the day. Um, yeah, there's our first rod build. We are done. So let's take a quicker Closer look there. Yeah, there's the uh, there's the actual first eye right there. So, and then on down. You know, the only thing I found was that whenever you're rolling the epoxy um, on the actual guides is to not goop epoxy all over the guide. So you got to be real careful with the brush. But other than that, y'all, that's a wrap. Um, We'll show it to you when it's done, and uh, we'll make a few casts with it, hopefully somewhere, if not just in the yard, and, uh, and see how she does. Okay, welcome back. Here is the finished rod. We have her rigged up here. Already got an A-rig on with some nice little homemade baits. There's the rest of the rod. So what better way to show you the finished product than out on the water? So we're going to film a few casts with it and uh, just kind of talk about how it feels. It balances beautifully. That A-Rig uh, on a lighter rod, you know, kind of feels too heavy for it. This one right here is a beef, beefy enough rod. Handle length is great. It feels good in my hands. So uh, we'll, we'll make the inaugural cast on film and hopefully catch a fish. It's freezing out today, but we're on the lake nonetheless, and uh, hopefully we can at least catch a few. All right, everybody, here we go. First cast with a rod that I built, my first rod I ever built by myself. It's really windy, so if there's any wind noise, I apologize. 
Here we go. Oh yeah, baby, feels good. That felt fantastic. I've never actually owned a rod of this exact length and size uh, and uh, strength, so it handles that A-Rig really well. Good God, the wind is getting bad. Well guys, I have probably never been so happy to get off the water. It is absolutely freezing. With the wind chill, it's uh, 35 degrees, and uh, some of you guys up north are probably laughing at me right now, but that's pretty cold for a Florida boy. And uh, it's especially cold when you've gone three and a half hours without a single bite. If I had picked up a few bites here or there, I would have stayed out all day, but uh, you know, the good news is the rod performed incredibly well. I mean, three and a half hours of casting a heavy, a heavy lure, putting a lot of tension on the rod, putting a lot of tension on the guides, um, you know, heavy line. You know, there's just, there's a lot of torque on these rods um, and everything held up great. You know, none of the eyes came loose. None of the epoxy broke, broke loose. I mean, all, all the handle assembly, everything is good and secure. Even given the fact that my limited experience, it's my first one. So if there's anything to take away from today, it's uh, I've, I built a good, successful rod my first time, which means you can too. And uh, I had a blast doing it. So um, I am probably never buying a rod off the shelf again. I mean, this not only is it fun, but you can truly build a rod that is made for you, balances, I mean, I've I've never felt a retrieve feel so good with this with this heavy a rig, and uh, you know, it, it, and a lot of that's the action of the rod, but it's also the quality of the rod, the quality of these blanks, and you know, the quality of the grips. It's just light years ahead of the other stuff that I use. I've never bought super expensive rods. Um, I've just kind of never needed to, but now you can get. A, a high quality rod that would cost you 200 250 dollars in the store you can build it for a little over a hundred bucks um, so that right there is the way to go especially if you're a home tackle craft guy so i um, gonna quit rambling gonna go eat lunch and uh, thaw out a little bit thank you guys so much for watching this video um, please shoot me some comments and or questions in the comments section below and uh, we'll catch you next time on the world's worst fishing